As a lifelong cyclist and ex-professional, I've ridden in literally every single type of weather that you can possibly imagine, sometimes for hours on end. And I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty grim, but it's left me with a wealth of experience that I can share some tips and tricks from with you in today's video. Now you're gonna notice I'm wearing a lot of ASOS in this video, and that's because they are our clothing partner at GCN. But all of these tips and tricks can be applied to any brand of clothing or any type of clothing that you may have at home. Right then, first things first, your hands and your feet. These bear the brunt of all the cold weather. So investing in a good quality pair of overshoes or gloves should be an essential item on your winter wardrobe. Let's start with your shoes and your feet. These are closest to the ground where they'll be bearing the brunt of all the spray coming off the road and all the cold wind as they're being propelled through the air. By taping over the vents in your shoes and then purchasing a pair of good quality overshoes, you'll turn your summer shoes into an adequate pair of winter cycling shoes. Keeping your extremities toasty and warm in the winter will do more for your comfort on the bike than almost anything else you can try. However, simply focusing on your hands and feet is not gonna keep you warm whilst on your bike. Think about all those large muscle groups. Think about all the areas in the wind. So the front of your thighs, even your glutes as they pick up the spray from the road, your shoulders, your arms, your chest. Wearing a windproof layer on any of these, or as I'm wearing, double layered tights, or those tights that you can get without a chamois, that's gonna help keep those muscle groups warm. Because as soon as any of these start to feel cold, all that cold blood is gonna start flowing down to your hands and it's gonna start restricting circulation as well as your body tries to keep the warmth in by its organs. Now there's one vital piece of kit here, which will do more than any other piece of kit that you could possibly own to help keep you warm. By keeping your core warm with a really high quality, thick thermal undervest, you'll be able to wear almost your summer wardrobe over the top of it, maybe an extra layer or so, but it will do more to keep you warm in the depths of winter than anything else you can possibly buy. So the first part of buying your winter cycling wardrobe should be a good quality undervest. I mentioned that I'm wearing double layered tights instead of windproof ones. These come with two layers of thick Roubaix material, but there's a cheap alternative as well, and that's buying a pair of tights without a chamois. Now you should still wash these as frequently as you wash a pair of tights with a chamois, but because you've got two layers over your glutes and over your thighs, it's gonna keep you that little bit warmer. Now, for two out of the four UK seasons, you'll probably get away with just wearing a casket underneath your helmet. But when the temperature really plummets, you're gonna to wanna to keep your head warm and your ears covered as well. This is because it's an ideal place to lose a lot of heat. And also these days, helmets are purposefully ventilated to cool our heads. So perhaps wearing a more aero helmet is a good place to start as these do traditionally have fewer vents. If you're somewhere really cool though, wearing a proper fleece lined skull cap is gonna be a really effective and cost effective way of keeping your head cool because they're cheap items to buy. Although it's not that cold today, so I'm just wearing an ear warmer. If you're somewhere really cold, a nice neck buff is also gonna really help you keep a lot of warmth in because a lot of blood flows close to the surface there, which will chill you down. Now, if you do live in Canada or Russia, you might wanna consider wearing a proper balaclava because we know you guys do like to ride when it's properly cold. If you can find the clip, Carry on with the ride. Undervests are amazing. Have I already mentioned that? Yeah, okay, I have, but they're so good, I actually think they're worth mentioning twice, especially if you're planning on doing a long, hard ride, but you still want to stop at the cafe halfway through. If you sweat anything like as much as I do, you're gonna to get to that cafe with a pretty wet undervest, and that is gonna chill you to the bone pretty quickly. So by carrying a spare in your pocket and swapping over before you sit down to enjoy your second or third cup of coffee, as I now am, you'll also avoid alienating yourself from the rest of the group because undervests, when they get wet and sweaty, they've got this habit of, they, they kind of start to smell. Since we're still at the cafe, let's talk about taking an emergency extra shell. Something that's easily stirrable, packs up nice and small, it's nice and light, and you can store it in your back pocket just for those emergencies if the weather was to take a turn for the worse. Out of choice, I would always take a waterproof over a windproof just because they're that little bit more substantial and it is the winter. Plus, let's not neglect the fact that I do live in the UK and the chance of rain is never really that far away. Now, even if you know that you're not likely to need an extra layer because the weather is set to stay the same, kind of looks like it will today, taking one is still incredibly useful because imagine it's five degrees outside and you puncture or you have a mechanical. Throwing on an extra layer is gonna make all that difference or those first few minutes when you leave the cafe. And then if you are on a group ride, taking an extra layer, even if it's just for the intention of lending it to someone else, can completely transform someone's day. And if you are taking that extra emergency layer, you may as well make sure it's nice and bright and vibrant, meaning you'll be spotted if you are out for that little bit longer than you intended, or if the clouds do suddenly appear 
and it starts to get that little bit darker. I quite like this high vis orange that this Stern Prince one comes in. In a video about clothing, you might be more than just a little bit surprised to hear me talking about training, but there are some types of weather which you simply can't go outside in. And no, we're not talking about you Canadians out there. We know that you guys are hardcore and will ride no matter what the weather is. Even when it's minus 40, you guys are just a different breed. I'm talking about the UK winters where it's, I don't know, minus two to two degrees and it's chucking it down with rain. It's simply unbearable to go outside and ride in that sort of weather. So instead of doing that four hour ride with a planned cafe stop, why not just shorten it? Why not make it an hour and a half? Ride extra hard, that way you'll be staying warm, you'll be getting a great training benefit and you'll be home that little bit sooner for a warm drink and a nice hot shower. Set off cold. Now that does sound a little bit counterintuitive and you may well be picturing getting hypothermia in those first few moments, but it's gonna keep you more comfortable for the rest of the ride if you do so. This is because it takes your body time to get up to operating temperature. If you set out fully dressed and you're warm the second you leave the door, within the first 10 minutes, as your temperature increases through the workload, you're gonna be dripping all over your bike at a hot, sweaty mess, which is gonna make you really cold later in the ride if you go down any descents. So instead of doing that, you wanna set off and feel a little bit of a chill in those first few moments, warm your body up through intensity of the ride, and then you'll be comfortable for the rest of it. Alternatively, if you really don't want to feel cold those first few moments, you could take that spare layer and remove it after five to 10 minutes. Dress for the types of rides you're gonna be doing and the types of surfaces that you're gonna be on. If you're doing a harder ride, you can probably get away with wearing a little bit less clothing and it also help keep the air circulating, which will stop you getting too wet as well. If you're gonna be riding off-road though, you could probably get away with wearing quite a bit less clothing. And this is because there's much less wind chill and you're gonna be working quite hard to get anywhere near the same sort of speed you'd be doing on the road. In fact, in years gone by, I do almost all of my training exclusively off-road when the weather was bad, just because I knew I'd be working that bit harder and staying that little bit warmer. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like or a thumbs up or whatever it is you like to call it. And if you think there's something we've missed, drop it in the comments below. And now, leave me get on with my winter ride.